for correct spellings. Right. So points to remember for correct spelling. Right. So now we are going to practice the sum points. Whatever the points are there, we are going to practice the points for correct spelling. Right. So at its best, English spelling can be perfect spelling, and especially for non-native speakers and writers. The following rules and significations are offered as as aids. You'll always be able to find exceptions to these rules, but most writers find them helpful. Right. So the spelling writing is a little bit embarrassing and a little bit discouraging concept for the writers of English language, the learners of English language, simply we can say. For native speakers, they can speak and uh, for, they can write correctly, but you know, when it comes to the learners of uh, English language, I mean, uh, uh, non-native speakers of English language, they feel a little bit embarrassing, disturbed, discouraged because of the rules. And you know, if you give one rule, what happens is in other conditions, they'll give some exceptions. That is why, some people are feeling a little bit uh, uneasy and some people are feeling it very advantage to learn correct way of uh, writing correct spelling all right so the now rule one i before e except offer c i before e so while you are writing the spelling when you are you are able to see letter I and E together, you should write I first, then E next. Okay. In any word, while you're writing, if you're able to see two letters, I and E together, you need to write first I, then E. Except with C, except after C. Let me give you some examples, by then you'll be able to understand it easily. So if you observe the first set, achieve, believe, bear, brief, hygiene, grief, thief, friend, grieve, chef, sorry, chief, friend, patience, peers, and priest. So if you observe the first set of examples, first set of examples, you'll be able to identify the rule. I should be placed before E, right? So I E, in the second example also, I E, third example, I E, fourth example, I E. Like that, if you observe all the first set of examples, you will be able to identify, we place I before letter E, correct? Right, so now, except after C. So actually this is the rule. You should write I before E. This is the rule, right? But if these letters coming after letter C, if letter I and E coming after C, in that case, the rule has to be changed as EI. I E has to be changed as E I reverse little reverse. So if you observe here, ceiling, conceive, deceive, perceive, receipt, receive, receipt, conceit. Correct. <clears throat> so if you observe here, there are letter E and letter I has been followed by letter C. In that case, we need to write down. C E I receive most of the times uh, whenever you are writing this word received we may get a little confused whether we should write C E I or C I E right you don't need to bother at that moment you just think about the word whether there is a C before E I if there is C no doubt it should be E I if there is no C then it can be I E this is the general conception. Okay, so note, write I E after C for words with the shun sound. So this is the first point, I E rule. But if it is followed by C, then it should be C E I 
then you need to write down i e after c words with shen so here whatever the point we discussed so this is the point c e i correct but sometimes this is what exception sometimes you can write c i e c i e though there is letter c you have to write c i e when when there is the sound shun shun sound sha simply we can say shun or sha ancient ancient efficient efficient sufficient sufficient conscience conscience all right so if you observe there is sha sound right and shun sha sufficient next efficient sufficient and conscience so if you observe everywhere there is sha sound correct shun simply so if you get that sound sound it's not spelling don't think about the spelling here it is about sound okay if you get that sound then you have to write down c i e but without this sound shun sound you should write c e i okay without shun sound you should write c e i with this sound c i e correct correct right right so what is the first point you need to keep in mind you should write whenever you are writing a spelling i should come before letter e that is the first point if these two letters i e these two letters are followed by letter c i mean first letter c then i r e in that case you need to write down c e i though there is letter c in a word if there is a sound shun sound in that case it should be c i e okay next point right so here and in words that rhyme with hai not only with shan if sound if you get the sound as hai all right if you get the sound hai in a word it should be written as e i e i so this is the exception for i e so i e is the general concept but we are talking about the exceptions okay so hai hai sound right nai a right neighbor next fridge beige slide way 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 right so in that case we are pronouncing a sound what is the sound we are pronouncing here a right so nai i right a next fry next beige next slay next wait next rain next way so if you observe in all these examples we are pronouncing we are producing the sound a a sound in that case we should write it as e i not i e so only in the beginning i e but if you observe all the places it's giving e i but shen i e shen i e but a and i mean h a a get that sound e i shen i e a e i opposite next and some other exceptions let's see what are the exceptions so either either neither 
find, foreign, for fight, hide, leisure, void, science. Sorry, sage. All right. So I don't need to find for it. Sorry, for it. Next, for fight, hide, leisure, right, and sage. So if you observe here, everywhere you are getting a either right so these are some other exceptions okay so what is the first rule i should come before e but if there is letter c before i e in that case it should be c e i right so for that there is another uh, exception when you are getting shen sound in that case you can write c i e but if you get a sound in that case you have to write e i right and some other exceptions i don't neither like that so is it clear so far yes so this is rule 1 so the whole data is rule 1 Right, the second point you need to keep in mind, a final Y changes to I when an ending is added. So for example, if there is a word ending with letter Y, a, a word ending with letter Y, while you are adding any word ending, for example, duty, okay, D-U-T-Y. So the word ending with Y. Okay. So if you want to add any ending, word ending, in that case, if you add any word ending, it's supposed to be changed the letter Y to letter I. This is what the rule. Let's see the examples. Supply. If you want to make it plural, it will become supplies supply supplies so we are just adding word ending what is the word ending here we are just adding yes e no only es es ed er these are the word endings we are adding here but as per this rule what happening whenever a word ending with the letter Y, as you see, when you are adding any letter endings, as I circled here, in that case, the letter Y has to be changed as letter I. Okay, the letter Y has been changed as letter I. Supply becomes supplies. Worry becomes worried. Merry becomes merrier. Okay, some exceptions, except when that ending is ing. If you add any other word ending like e, s, e, d, e, r, in that case, it will become, y will become as i. But if the word ending is ing, which means present participle form, ing form. If you add any ing to any word, in that case, it won't change like that. For example, cry, crying, study, studying. So I remain same and whatever the word ending we have, we have added, it remains same. So ing is the word ending. Right, though the letter, though the word ending with the letter Y, if you add ing, it will be the same, no modification, no change. Crying, C R Y I N G, study, S T U G Y I N G. Right, there will be no modification, so it remains same. 
right? Yes. Right. And right. And when the Y is preceded by a bubble. When the Y is preceded by a bubble. So before the letter Y, if there is a bubble letter, any bubble. A E I O U, any one of them. If it is preceded by letter Y, in that case, it will change like this. Right? Obey, obeyed. Same, same. Right? So, the letter ending, the word ending is. Right, so now, so and when the Y is preceded by a bubble, then it remains same. It won't change as uh, Y to I. It will remain same. For example, you just look at the examples, you will be able to understand that concept, right? So, obey. The, the word ending with Y, but it preceded by an oval. It preceded by an oval, a oval. So in that case, the Y remains same. Though the word ending is ed, it remains same. It's not changing like this. And though the word ending is ing, it remains same. Which means, if the letter Y for preceded by any bubble letter in that case whatever the word ending you are adding either it might be ies or ed or e or r ing so whatever the condition it might be but it will remain same the y will remain same whatever the word adding you are ending word ending you are adding that will be added that's it simply All right now Come to the next one. What is the point next? A silent E. A silent E dropped. A silent E dropped when adding an ending that begins with a bubble. Silent E, letter silent E is going to be dropped when you are adding an ending that begins with vowel. So example, advance. So here if you observe why we are calling it as silent letter E, silent E. We don't pronounce it as advance C or advance C, correct? We just pronounce it as advance, s, ending with s sound, s sound, right? Surprise, surprise. So we are not pronouncing the letter E sound here. So these are silent E's. In that case, whenever there is a silent E, if you are adding any word ending which is starting with a vowel letter, when you are adding, uh, when you are adding any word ending which is starting with a letter, a vowel, in that case, that silent e should be dropped. That silent e should be omitted or left. So simply advancing, advancing. So here, e is absent. We removed e here, right? Similarly, surprising. So here, E vanished. Okay, we removed letter E. Okay? All right, next. Yes. A kept when the ending begins with the consonant. So, a silent letter E dropped when 
the ending is beginning with a vowel we are dropping the letter e but if the word ending is starting with a consonant if the word ending starting with a consonant in that case we will remain same the letter e remains same example check at once advance letter e is there like letter e is there but the word ending starting with consonant not with the vowel if it is vowel we are supposed to omit or eliminate this uh, this letter e but it is a consonant in that case the letter e remains same likeness right advancement likeness advancement so the word endings these are starting with the consonant that's why we are not removing a letter e is it clear yes right now right so unless the e is preceded by a vowel unless e is preceded by a vowel so if there is a silent letter e it should be dropped when a, the word ending starting with a consonant sorry vowel it should be dropped if it is consonant it should be remain same and if the letter e preceded by any vowel in that case though the word ending starting with a consonant we supposed to remove letter e let's see the example all right so if you observe the example here word ending is letter e and the word ending starting with consonant right here is the consonant same here also the consonant in that case it will remain same that is the rule but here if the letter e if this is the letter if it is followed if it is preceded by any vowel if it is preceded by any vowel in that case letter e should be dropped okay so here argue the letter e has been omitted so there the letter e vanished we removed that e similarly here also okay so unless the e is preceded by a vowel is it clear yes yes sir right next drop the e when the word ends in d g e okay drop the e when the word ends in d g e example d g e judge lodge whatever the word ending whether it is starting with vowel or whether it is starting with consonant it doesn't matter if the word ending is d g e in that case we supposed to remove letter e judge judgment lodge lodging we just remove letter e in these two examples clear so far absolutely sir all right adding a prefix seldom changes the spelling of a word if you add a prefix mostly it won't change the spelling while writing the word if you add any prefix to the base word what is the meaning of prefix prefix so for example this is the word prefix uh, before the word after word no, no. before pre before 
right? For example, this impossible. Is yeah. For example, important, possible, unimportant, impossible, important, unimportant, advantage, disadvantage. So if we add any prefix to the base word, it won't change most of the times, 99 times. It won't change. Examples. Adding a prefix alum changes the spelling of a word. It won't change, right? So spelled is the word. If you want to add any prefix, miss, misspelled. So spelling is same. Necessary, you just add un, unnecessary, right? Satisfied, dissatisfied, interested, disinterested, inform, misinform, right? So whatever the prefixes you are adding here, they are not changing the actual word. Of course, the meaning is different, they are making different meanings, but we are not talking about the meanings, but we are talking about only the formation of word. Okay, so while you are adding the prefixes to any word, they won't make any difference. Think, uh, remember, it is about prefixes. Whatever the word endings we are added, those are all nothing but suffixes. Suffix means after the base word. Prefix means before the word. Before the base word is prefix, after the base word is suffix. Pre, pre means before, post, next, right? Likewise, prefix, before, suffix, after, ending, at the end. Right, so we form plurals by adding yes or yes to the nouns. Yes or yes to the nouns. In that case, how it change? So when you're supposed to add yes to the noun, when you uh, need to add yes to the word. So you need to add es with ch, sh, ss, x, or z. So the words ending in CH, yes, H, yes, 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 or Z. In that case, we're supposed to add E, yes, to make the plural. Okay. We just need to add E, yes, to the plural. Right. So if you observe here, the word endings CH, SH, SS, X, and Z. So in that case, you need to add only one change, one modification, AES, to make the plural. So this is also sometimes we may get confused. When we are adding yes, when we are adding yes to the words, right? So whenever we are talking about uh, verbs or words, whatever the words we are talking about, whenever we are talking about the words, if you want to make the plural, we need to add yes or yes. So this is what the rule we know from the childhood. But we should know when we have to use yes, when we should use yes. Okay, so ES should be used when the word is ending with CH, yes, H. I'm talking about spelling, it's not about the sound. CH, yes, H, yes, S, X, or Z. In these cases, we can use ES. We should use ES. Right, next. Right, for words ending in a consonant plus Y, right? So if a word ending with Y, before that, if it is a consonant, change the Y to I. So we just discussed that rule. So how the Y is in changing to I. And add ES to make the plural for proper noun. Lazy. Yes, 
what is mean by proper noun proper noun common noun proper nouns common nouns countable nouns uncountable nouns material nouns right there are different types of nouns so now what is mean by proper noun e proper noun is your given name <laughs> so all the names nothing but proper noun pramod kavita vasudha alok so these are all proper nouns proper yes, yes so yes. particular name to a particular person so man who is that man it's a common noun right yes. human being yes who is that human being it's a common noun right like that so proper noun means it's a given name to a particular person a particular thing or particular object or particular animal particular species whatever it may be so whatever the name we have given to a particular thing a specific name all that specific names or nothing but proper nouns so if it is a proper noun keep the y so in the previous i mean the previous concept so in this example this in this rule there are two parts the first part is the word ending is y it is preceded by any consonant letter the letter y has to be changed as letter i and you supposed to add es to make the plural that is first half second half if the proper nouns are there keep the letter y and ending with o add es if it is a proper noun we should keep the y we should not avoid the y do the word is ending with o right examples all right so first thing for adding endings constant plus y the change y to i right so the toy right so word ending is y but we need to think about the previous letter it is not a consonant it is a vowel so in that case we should remain the y if it is consonant then in that case it should be changed i okay next company so here you can observe that the word ending is y but it is preceded by a consonant so in the case the y has been changed as i and we just added e s yes, companies next kennedy similarly if you observe the word ending is y correct the word ending is y before that a consonant in that case how it should be changed how it should be changed right the y has to be dropped or y has to be changed as i and we should add es but here the answer is different it's different why it's kennedys it is not k e n n e d i e s why we written why we have written as k e n n e d y e s kennedys preceded by c i think all right because it's a proper noun right proper noun keep the y right if it is a proper noun we should keep the y right next tomato tomato okay if the word ending is o if the word ending is o then we should add e s yes. tomatoes right so hero heroes go goes do does echo echoes right is it clear earlier cut right yes sir 